Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at the Mega MFT1741. Now, I have looked at this in a previous video, I was just basically unboxing it and seeing what was in the box, and it's already been seen in a few other videos since then as well. But this time we're going to have a look at it in more detail, see what sort of function it's got, and do a few actual tests on various items. So, this is it, it comes in this soft case uh, by default. May not be to uh, everybody's liking with a soft one. Obviously, hard cases are something which uh, could be had as well. But comes in the uh, soft case there, and that's all they say in the uh, sort of unboxing video there. And the uh, main thing itself, fairly standard sort of shape for these types of things, whoever you buy them from. And uh, this uh, has the two selector knobs here. This is for the main function there, which we'll look at in a moment. And then it's got this secondary one here, which is for various uh, sub-options of what you've got here. And it's all colour-coded, so for example, your RCD test here is in yellow. And the corresponding ones here are in yellow as well. And some of these don't actually have a corresponding bit here because they don't have any other settings. So insulation resistance, of course, doesn't actually have any others, so it doesn't apply for the second control there. Now this is battery powered, like uh, obviously all of these things are. And uh, batteries we can find in the bottom here. So we'll just have a look, uh, see what we've got with this one. Now there are a couple of options uh, with this in that you can have either rechargeable batteries or you can just use uh, normal sort of primary cells as they're called which are of course non-rechargeable. So here's the batteries and we've got here the uh, rechargeable ones, these actually were supplied with it. And these are nickel metal hydrides and uh, AA size uh, 2000 milliamp hour for these and there's six of these, to four here and there's two underneath as well. And you can actually put normal AA's in here like alkalines or whatever should you want to. It obviously uh, needs to be replaced then, but uh, got the recharger ones, obviously a bit more convenient there. Also got the two fuses, so uh, both the same there. So these are two amp fuses, and uh, braking capacity is greater than uh, 50kA on both of those, so yeah, just replacement uh, if and when necessary, which hopefully uh, won't be that often. Back cover does have a uh, decent uh, lip around the edge there, so it is fully sealed there, so in case of any uh, exploding fuses or whatever, which in theory shouldn't happen, but obviously it's got that uh, seal there to prevent that as well. Uh, it's also a rubber seal there, so obviously moisture and whatever doesn't get in. It is screwed there, and the screws do go into brass inserts, so it's pretty much what you'd expect. Although, of course, with the rechargeable batteries there, you're not likely to be opening this pretty much either, other than if the batteries are eventually depleted and no longer charge. Bit of wording on the bottom there, so disconnect test aids before removing the cover. Pretty uh, standard advice, obviously, because connect up to a uh, live power supply, then obviously uh, live bits could be exposed. And it's got the various uh, markings on the bottom here. The uh, C mark, obviously. Fuse inside, don't throw it in the bin. Warnings, obviously, and then the uh, yeah, some kind of approvals mark there. I think that's for Australia or somewhere, they sort of C tick mark or whatever. And of course, as everything in the world has these overall quality control things on it. Screws here in the bottom, presumably for uh, opening it and uh, dismantling it, which uh, so we're not going to be doing in this example. On the front here, we've got the connections for the test lead. So the three there, colour coded, red, green, and blue. And the lead it comes with are those colours as well. You can also get uh, brown, blue, and green leads from some people. Although again, a lot of manufacturers use the red as well, but that's what it matters hugely. Uh, port here for a uh, current clamp. So it shows there, that's for optional accessory. And uh, slid into this position, that's where the charging would go in. So uh, 12 to 50 volts there, 1.2 amps is supplied with the charger as well. And it's got the soldering thing there, so you can't have test leads plugged in whilst you're actually charging the thing up. So of course that basically uncovers those and only allows that to be accessed in that position. Now in terms of the weight of this thing, uh, just get the scales here, just have a look. This is with the batteries and also the uh, strap attached there. So we stick that on there. So uh, 1.464 kilograms, so uh, just under one and a half kilograms. And in uh, other measurements, uh, just have a quick look there, three pounds, uh, three and a half ounces nearly. So uh, a fairly weighty thing, but uh, so it comes with a strap and everything, so not uh, sort of too excessive. Now in terms of controls, 
the main control here just to select whichever function you're going to be using and it's all color coded so that uh, for example on the yellow here for the RCD test you've got the smaller selector here to select whatever options you've got and again the green here the green there and so on and some of these don't have a corresponding thing over here so like the red here for the installation resistance doesn't have a corresponding bit over there because of course there aren't really any options for that Test buttons on both sides, that's the black one here and there, so either can be used. And then we've got the red ones here, which are the uh, test lock on both of these, so basically that will uh, lock it on as if it was holding down the button continuously. This one has a couple of other features as well, so you've got your uh, Bluetooth here for storing results there, or transferring to another device. Uh, backlight here for the screen, and then we've got the uh, other one here which again selects various different modes and options again depending on what mode you're currently in. So functions we've got then, the uh, first one here is voltage, uh, phase rotation and frequency, continuity or basically resistance measurement, and then the uh, red section here is for insulation resistance, and you've got the four voltages, 100, 250, 500 and 1000. Loop impedance here, so we've got between line and uh, protective earth, and also between line and line if it's a for multiple phase installation or line and neutral. Uh, earth resistance measurement for your earth electrodes or whatever. This item here is for use with the external clamp, which uh, is an optional accessory. And then we have the RCD test around here, so we've basically got the actual uh, trip time, so half, one and five times. Auto, which is basically those in a predefined sequence. And then the ramp test to determine what the actual uh, trip current is for a particular RCD. And then on the uh, second selectors here, certainly for the RCD, we've got the actual current settings for the RCD, so from 10 to 1 amp. It also has a variable option, so you can set uh, current which aren't actually on those predefined ones there. For loop impedance, there's a couple of options there, so it's either just the standard one or there's a maximum mode, which uh, as you can take multiple measurements in sequence and it will then record the highest value. Options here for the earth electrode test, so you've got uh, two or three pole measurements, so depending on how many electrodes you're going to be using. And then there's options there, we can use the current clamp and an optional voltage clamp as well. Options here, this is mainly for the storage of measurements, and then a uh, setup mode for various items. And the thing down the bottom here with the little person on, this is basically a touch voltage test. And the way that that works is you can connect a wire or a test lead to the back of this and attach it to some item, and then if you touch here, if the voltage between that and uh, basically you, as it were, being standing on the ground exceeds a certain value, then it will display a warning for that. Again, we'll look at that uh, a bit later on. Now, in terms of turning it on, it's just turning it to whatever selection you want. This is a soft switch, so it's not actually like a hard power switch. It's not disconnecting the battery, because if we turn that off, you'll see that there's a delay while it uh, tells you it's going off. So this is a soft switch, but uh, most in fact, probably almost all equipment these days uh, works like that. So just press turn it to the appropriate item and then it would display uh, whatever you have. Now the battery indicator here for the battery level there is an option within the settings where you can change this depending on what type of batteries you have. So this is currently set for the nickel metal hydride rechargeables. You can also change that so if you're going to put alkalines into this you do need to uh, change that in the options because a fully charged alkaline is 1.5 volts per cell and uh, fully charged nickel metal hydride is only 1.2, so if you have it on the wrong setting it could show low battery when of course they're actually fully charged. So, something to be aware of there. Now, we're currently haven't got any leads connected, so uh, just get some of these uh, attached up and then we'll have a look and see uh, various measurements that we can do. Now, in terms of the test leads it comes with, it comes with a set of three here, and obviously colour-coded to match the items on the thing itself. And uh, Red, blue and green, which uh, always seems a bit of an odd choice, but uh, Mega are set not alone in uh, producing test leads of those colours. If you're going to go for your sort of up-to-date colours, it should really be brown, blue and theoretically green or green and yellow striped, but uh, I say it's fairly common. Several manufacturers do them in the red, so those are the colours we have. Uh, some manufacturers do actually do brown ones, but uh, ultimately it's just a colour, so that's what it really matters uh, in the end there. Obviously fully shrouded uh, plugs and things on the ends there. And these have the uh, clips there with the decent sharp teeth on those. You can also just unplug those and then just connect one of the actual point probes there. Again, small uh, contact area there, so 
obviously uh, complies with the GS38. Now with the top set on here, there's category 3 uh, up to 1000 volts, or category 4 at 600 volts. Category 4 is obviously what you would really want for measurements, say a distribution panel or similar. And uh, sort of a rubberized uh, textured part there, decent strain relief and all branded up obviously as well. So yeah, seems uh, entirely normal there. And then the clip there again just snaps over. And we can see the ratings here again, it's the same as before. So category 3, 1000 volts, and category 4, 600 volts as well. And the categories there, which goes from 1 to 4, is really about where you're going to be using this and the type of fault current that's available. So category 4 being the highest, so uh, no problems with that. Now these are unfused test leads. You can also get leads which have fuses in. I think I'll actually do one of these. So. That may be something to consider in some situations, but test uh, leads with fuses in do have their own problems. So uh, it's not necessarily the case you should uh, rush out and buy such things. The main difference with the uh, unfused is that if a fault occurred, say between two of these, if it say got snagged in some machinery or caught up in a panel or something and it was two of these shorted together, if you've got this connected across a supply, that's going to cause a big fault here and therefore could cause some kind of explosion or damage. Obviously yeah, not trapping the uh, test lead in some kind of cabinet or something would be the answer there, but if you had fused test leads that would protect against such a situation. The problem with fused test leads is that fuses themselves have a fairly significant resistance in the scheme of things, so if you're going to measure, say, loop impedance, then if you had a fuse in here you would have to actually account for the fact that there's a fuse there, because otherwise the readings you've got would be uh, kind of all over the place. Also comes with this uh, rather long and uh, pointy probe here, same ratings as the other one. Insulator right up to the end there, so presumably you're sort of getting into very tiny spaces, but uh, you only get the one of those on the red colour for that. And the other lead it comes with is uh, this one, which is again just a red coloured one here. And this has again the small contact here at the end to comply with that, but you can remove that, so obviously expose a massive chunk there to short out on whatever. Main point of this one, it has the uh, actual test button on the probe itself, and of course the plug there has the additional contacts for that on the device itself. So handy there, you can just hold that and then obviously uh, just press the test button. But, uh, as we'll see uh, later, you can actually configure the thing to auto start most of the tests anyway, so not strictly necessary, but uh, it can be a nice feature to have in some cases. And again, this is an unfused lead, so again. Uh, pros and cons for and against those. Now this one as supplied like that is uh, 1000 volts category 2, so that's a fairly low uh, level there. However it does also have, and comes with this uh, piece here which can go over the top there, and uh, this one then changes the rating, uh, it's about C there, so that's category 3, 1000 volts and category 4, 600. So, Again, moves up to the other one, mainly due to the additional length there on that. So, again, pretty much all uh, options covered with that. And then the only other lead is this one here, which is the uh, standard UK BS1363 there. And that goes up to the three cutter leads there to obviously plug into your normal outlets. And this, this does have a fuse in it, as you would expect. So let's just do a few uh, tests and things uh, with uh, various stuff there. So what we'll use is the uh, lead we've got here with the standard plug on. So just a question of plugging into the various points here. And so all uh, colour-coded as you would expect. Now uh, one thing with these is if you put them in that way round, they do actually hang out below that. So if you're going to put it on the surface, you're going to put those around that way. Or just say, put these in the other way up. So you can obviously have them coming over the top like that. So we'll do it that way in this uh, particular demonstration. But uh, I'm not a particularly major point there. And then of course the uh, plug can just go straight into your normal outlet like that. So just have a quick look at some of the basics here. So we'll just turn this on to the uh, volts and uh, frequency position there. And in this case it doesn't actually matter what the other knob is on because it doesn't have any corresponding part. So pretty much anywhere will do other than the uh, settings choice there. So that's fine. Now in this particular state it's basically showing it's less than 10 volts because we're not actually switched on. 
and again the battery at the top there showing us is fully charged so if we uh, just turn on the power here we can see the voltage there so 248 249 again it will fluctuate around a bit that's entirely normal and that's because the actual voltage is varying a bit as various loads are switched on and off around the area frequency 50 hertz as you'd expect and it got at the bottom here you see that the uh, volts there and the AC symbol and it says TRMS there so true RMS which this thing does actually measure. Now this is with the backlight turned off we can uh, turn that on there it's not going to look very much here because obviously we've got rather strong lighting anyhow but it's basically a sort of a dull white glow. Uh, turn it off there you'll see that's the uh, backlighting effect there so uh, perfectly decent and decent even illumination across the entire thing. The backlight does come on automatically on some of the other tests or you can just turn it on with the button there as needed but in this case it's uh, decently lit anyhow so not a problem. Now as well as voltage and frequency it does also do phase rotation as we can see here with the uh, circular indicator and we don't have a three phase supply here so can actually demonstrate that but essentially what you get is inside the segments here it's either going to be L1, L2, L3 for clockwise or if not it's going to be on the bottom here it's going to show L1, L3, L2 for anti-clockwise generally installations are done as clockwise although it doesn't usually matter as long as it's the same throughout the installation so that's pretty much all there is to that one there's no uh, pressing of test buttons or whatever it's just literally turn it on there's the information that you would want now let's have a look at some of the uh, RCD functions here. So I've actually got an RCD here. This is a pretty standard type AC, 30 milliamp uh, kind of thing. It's the most common type uh, currently in use, so that may not be uh, or shouldn't be the case. So uh, we've basically got the choices here, so we'll turn that one to the selections here. Now it's saying error here because we've got the other selector here in a different section, so of course we just need to turn that to something appropriate. And then again we've got the uh, normal display. Uh, this is a 30 milliamp job, so of course we'll select 30 from the selections here. Now for the RCG choices, on as well as the two uh, selector knobs here, we've also got the options over here. So at the moment we've got at the bottom half, which is the corresponding setting here. So if we were to turn that to uh, 1, for example, it shows 1. And again 5 will show 5 at the bottom as well. The type of RCD is indicated at the bottom here, so currently we're on type A. And if you want to change that, it's a question of holding down the selector button here, and then it will move across to the next one. So this will be type A, so you've got the AC at the top and the pulse DC underneath. Next along is a type AC, but the uh, selective variety or the time delayed version, the S in the square there. And then again, we've got the type A selective as well. and. Uh, Go back down to the half there and then next on the list is type B which is reacting to smooth DC and the reason we change that there is because uh, some of the tests for type B only apply at the lower levels there and then we hold and press again then it was go back to the type AC that we had previously and the other thing at the top here is this UL 50 volts this is essentially the uh, touch voltage limit so that if you're going to actually do the test of course it is basically simulating a fault so some current will actually be flowing through the CVC and therefore you can get a voltage showing on the exposed metal part so this will limit it to 50 volts obviously otherwise it could be uh, creating a dangerous situation see if there was a fault with the RCD or something so basically if it detects it's going to go above 50 then it won't actually do the test and they've got here on the display is zero so that's zero degrees a short press on this can change that to 180 and then short press just goes back to that. So you've got all the options uh, within there. So the uh, only one, a bit of a time, is the changing of the type, but it's not something you have to do pretty much that often because it's not likely an installation is going to have a whole selection of different ones in it. So we'll test this RCD here. This is, say, just a type AC, 30 milliamps, so pretty much a very common choice. So we'll do them all through manually first. So we'll start with a half current. And we've got set to 30 here, and we're also on the zero degrees there. So uh, if we just turn on and we'll see the display gives us the voltage so 245 here and also the frequency as well and when it's in the off state it's basically saying it's less than 48 so of course uh, no voltage there 
So turn that on. To do the test, just a question of pressing the test button either here or over there. So press there, and then let's do the test. And in this case, uh, it hasn't tripped, and the uh, time is greater than 1999 milliseconds or two seconds, which is what you'd expect for that. You could also repeat that on the uh, 180 by just pressing the button there and changing that. So let's move up to the uh, times one. Now this is the one it should trip, so we should be seeing the trip time there. So yeah, we'll just do that one. So say trips off there, time 13.9 milliseconds. And the touch voltage in this case was zero because it's uh, incredibly quick. If there had been a voltage there, it would have obviously displayed that on the small numbers. Now we can just change that to the 180 and do that again. And uh, this time we get 20.8, so some minor difference. And again we go to the uh, times 5. Same deal again, just press and uh, gives us the trip time of 10.4. Now if we want to do the 180 as well, then obviously we can. Now we get 19.3, and for these we would record the largest number, so 19.3 in the case of that one. Now the test process for the type A is, is pretty much the same, it's just selecting the appropriate uh, RC type at the bottom here. So rather than applying the full AC waveform, of course it would apply a pulsed one, but again in terms of actually using it, pretty much the same. Now the auto function is one of these uh, time saving jobs where it will actually run through these in sequence for you, so basically half one and five. So uh, we'll actually uh, just run through those. So question of turning on the RCD there, again we get the voltage and frequency as before. And then when we start it, it will then do the two, or well, the three tests in the order for us. So that has now tripped there, so we can just turn on again. And it's tripped again. And we turn back on, tripped again. And just repeats a few times, and then it says end here. And then that's basically just step through the three that we obviously just had. And then to see the individual results, it's just a question of pressing the button here, and that will scroll through those in order. So uh, there we have growth in 1999 on the half setting, pretty much what you expect. 30.5 on the zero degree times one, 20.9 on the 180, and then the times 5 was 10.4 on 0, and 19.1 on the 180. So you can just scroll through those in order. So fairly straightforward. Saves a bit of time if you want to do all the sequence. Otherwise it's the same uh, basic test as we had previously. Now the other test for RCDs here is the ramp test, which essentially just measures the actual trip current. Because a 30 minute RC doesn't necessarily trip at 30, it's going to trip somewhere between 15 and 30 if it's working correctly. And obviously if it's not working correctly then uh, who knows, could be almost anything. Now settings for the ramp test are pretty much the same as for previously. So ramp test here, got the little ramp test symbol on the display. And then just pick the appropriate current here, 30 milliamps again is what we're going to be using. And just as before we've got the type of RCD here, this is the type AC. And uh, again press and hold the button here to move between the various types, and then the short press just selects between 0 and 180, just as before. And then in terms of doing the test, uh, just a question of uh, connecting up the power and pressing the test button. So we'll have a go with that. Uh, we'll just turn on the uh, power there, and again we get the voltage and frequency displayed to confirm that uh, it is in fact connected there. And we'll try the 0 degrees first. Now this will display the trip current rather than the time. So in this case 21 milliamps, again that's perfectly fine, that's within the specification. And we can of course try it on the 180 as well. And in this case also 21 milliamps, so uh, again that's uh, perfectly acceptable. And as before we get the touch voltage displayed here, which again is zero in this particular case, mainly due to the way that this uh, testing thing has been set up. In terms of tests for all the other ratings of RCD in terms of the different milliamps there, it's pretty much the same procedure. The only main difference is that on the higher ratings you don't just have to do all of those tests because those are generally only applicable to the 30 milliamp varieties. Now the other thing here is this uh, setting over on the right, this var or variable, and therefore if it's not one of the RCDs listed here with the more common choices, you can uh, turn it around here 
Now in this case we're on 44 milliamps, but the uh, whole point of this is you can change this to uh, pretty much whatever you want. So we do this by pressing the button here. Now as before it will change it to the 180, but if we press again we'll then get the two arrows here. And what they refer to are the two buttons over the side here, which you can see have the two little arrows on there. And those are basically up and down for the current that we want. So if we wanted to decrease the current, we can obviously decrease that in steps of one milliamp at this level. And if you hold the button down, it will obviously uh, step through that more quickly. And if you want to go up, then likewise it's the up button there. And we can hold that down to get to whatever value we would want. Now it goes in uh, one milliamp steps there, but you see now it's going in steps of five. Once it gets over the uh, moderate sort of level there, and it will go all the way up to uh, considerably more than this. Uh, so you're going up in uh, fives there. Doesn't seem to have any sort of acceleration on the uh, thing, but uh, therefore, if you want to get to a high number, it could take quite a while. Again, this is not something you're going to use pretty much, uh, or hardly ever, and if you are, it's going to be set to a particular value for a certain installation, and then you're just going to do those tests. So, so you want to get about 500, and it now goes up in steps of 10 milliamps, and obviously that goes up uh, to wherever you would want. So if you had a 700 milliamp RCD for whatever reason, then yes, you can actually do the test with that. And just with the other modes, you've got the uh, settings at the bottom there, and again, the 0 and 180, it just gives an extra adjustment for the actual trip current. And just a final point on the RCD testing. Uh, in this case we had all three leads connected here. It's not actually necessary to have all three connected. You can just have the line and the uh, earth there, or the red and green, and not have this connected. However, if you have the blue connected, it does then check to see that the uh, polarity is correct, as in that uh, this is actually line and this is really neutral. And if it isn't, it will then display a warning. So it can be useful to have that connected in, but in terms of the actual test, it's not actually necessary to have that connected there, it's just that uh, additional feature of the uh, incorrect polarity warning. Now the next function I'll have a look at is uh, loop impedance, so uh, just turn that round to uh, the one here. And for these, you do need to select on the uh, other selector here one of the two options we have. And we've got uh, Z or for impedance basically, and we also have max Z or max impedance. The only difference between these is that in this mode it just does the one test, but uh, in the mode here, which as it implies, it will actually record the maximum reading. So if you say went around a house and tested out, say, 50 socket outlets, it would do the test for each one as you just plug it in and carry it on as normal, but then it will display the maximum reading for that, so you don't have to necessarily remember it yourself. So maybe quite a handy feature there. In terms of the display, it's pretty much what we had previously, so in this particular setting we've got less than 48 volts because we're not connected, so obviously uh, if we turn on the power then it will just display our voltage there as we had before. Now uh, this is actually set up to do it automatically on the pings being connected, so we can see it's just going through that there, and the video you get there is 0.44. You can actually disable that function in the settings if you want. So what you can then have to uh, press the test button to get that started. And we saw there it basically ran through the uh, what they've called this confidence meter. If we just run that again, we'll uh, see that as before. So as this narrows in, it's basically saying it's getting more confident about the reading it has. And in this case, it was 0.44 anyway because there's not a great deal of noise or whatever on this supply. And as well as the uh, actual. Uh, Earth leaving pinus there, 0.44 ohms. We've also got the perspective current there, or fault current, 526 amps. The thing to note about this is it is not calculated from the actual voltage you're measuring, it's just calculated due to the nominal voltage, so 230 in the case of this. Now, in terms of choices we've got here for this, so again using the mode button here, we've got two leads and high current. That's the one that will definitely trip RCD, so if we attempt to do that, it would uh, trip the RCD we have here. Maybe somewhat more accurate, because again, higher current. It's obviously uh, generally beneficial with that, so that's the sort of thing you'd use at the origin of the installation, where there's no RCDs present. We've also got a two-wire low current mode, and that's designed for where you would only have, say, the line and the uh, CPC available, such as a light switch, because you're not going to have a neutral there in many cases. So two wires, but uses low current to avoid tripping the RCD. 
And then we've got the three wire low current, which is a more traditional low current test there, which requires, of course, line neutral and earth to be present. And then it cycles back around to the two high as we had before. In terms of doing the test, it's pretty much the same, just press the button or turn the test when it's uh, actually turned on, so no real changes there. Certainly if you've only got, uh, say, no RC on the circuit, the high current one would be recommended. But of course if you have an RCD, then you're going to be lumbered with the uh, low current ones, otherwise it just trips the RCD every single time. And with installations having RCDs pretty much in everything, that's going to be the most common choice. Now the other thing here, we'll see at the bottom, in three uh, wire low current mode, we've got the actual types of RCD at the bottom. So that's the type A and the C at the bottom there. And if we press and hold, then it will go over to the type B. Now this doesn't appear to be documented in the manual because the manual that comes on the CD doesn't even apply to this particular model. It's only for the previous one, so a bit of a fail there. But uh, nevertheless, that's presumably what it's for. It's presumably the type of test current being applied to avoid tripping the things. Although bearing in mind, as it said in the manual, that uh, even with the three-wire test, it's not guaranteed to not trip the RCD, particularly if there's any kind of leakage current on the system already. Now the other option here is this maximum uh, impedance option here. So if we uh, just do a uh, test there, pretty much the same as before. It's on the auto thing there. Uh, let's run through those. So 0.43, so that's actually smaller than we had previously. And we'll see up here, it's got the, instead of the actual uh, persuasive fault current, we've now got the maximum reading. So 0.43, of course, is the one we had. And then the idea of this is you would obviously go to, say, a different socket outlet. We can actually use a different one here, although it's on the same uh, thing, so it theoretically shouldn't make any difference. Try it on that one. Okay, so that came out as 0.44, so now we see the top is updated to 0.44, because that is, of course, the maximum. And the idea of that is, say, if you go and set the whole house or something, test all of the sockets, and it automatically keeps track of the highest value for you, and that's the value we'd write on the certificate. Now, if we go to the next setting here, this is the between phases, uh, line to line, or between line and neutral. And uh, this doesn't have a uh, low current option because, of course, no RCD will trip when you're testing between those. So all we've got is the two-wire high current. As before, it gives you the voltage, obviously, when you're not in the test mode. And you can either press the button or apply it to the power for the first time or do the test automatically. So just see what that is. 0.46 ohms, 499 amps as the uh, perspective fault current. That's quite low because we're at the end of a fairly lengthy extension lead and various other bits of equipment here. Notice that was quite a lot quicker than the previous test because, again, it is a high current test. So uh, it only just takes a few seconds there. And compare that to the uh, previous one on the three wire low current. So quite a lot longer there. And in the event of having noise on the circuit, which we don't have here, that could actually take a lot longer than the little uh, symbol comes on in the event of that. Now, so a quick look at installation resistance testing. And this is the red section here, so just a question of turning the selector to the appropriate choice. Four test voltages here, so 100, 250, 500, and 1000. Now, we get quite a different display on this one. It has the uh, digital display here, and also this sort of analog-like uh, reading at the top as well. And this is uh, basically infinity over here, all the way down to zero on the right. Now this red section here, there's no corresponding red bit here, so in terms of this it's just pick the wrong here, you don't have to do anything on the other selector there because there are no other options for this, it's purely what test voltage you would like. And in terms of connections, two wires only, or two leads only, so uh, I'll just connect it onto this uh, piece of uh, flex we've got here. Now, for those who don't know, uh, insulation resistance testing does use fairly high voltages, so of course you would not want to be uh, holding on to this while uh, pressing the button at pretty much any of those voltages, especially not on the 1000. Now, in this mode, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either just press and hold the test button, or just have this lock facility, you see the little lock symbol there. So if you press and hold the button and then press the lock one, that will basically lock on the test voltage permanently, so obviously it will then uh, keep it on there for as long as you want. In this case, we're just going to press the button and have a look. This is a new roll of uh, flex here, so 
I should test OK. And we'll see there the value rising and uh, very quickly gets into the many hundreds of mega ohms. And it's rising up like that because essentially we're charging up a capacitor here, which is the cable itself, two very long conductors with insulation between them. And as we see there, it's got up into the uh, 700 plus range already. So of course that's perfectly fine for this particular one. And the other thing here is the voltage being used, so 546 volts in this case. And if we release that, it actually does discharge the circuit, because if you charge up a capacitor and then just hook the leads off, it leaves it in a charged state. Of course, maybe uh, somewhat unsafe, so as long as these are connected, it does discharge that as well. Other voltages work pretty much the same way, so if you go to the 1000 volts range, then it will do uh, pretty much the same thing. The only difference is this has a warning the first time you've actually selected that uh, particular voltage, and uh, it comes up with that flashing deal there. And then it just does the test pretty much as before, and as before we can see that sort of charging up effect that we had previously, so it starts out at low value, as it basically charges up the cable, that increases into the many hundreds of mega ohms. So again, pretty much what you expect from a very long length of cable as we've got here. Now sticking your fingers across the end of 1000 volts is certainly not recommended, that would certainly be rather painful. This tester and most others does have a current limited output, so it's not actually going to be horrendously dangerous. In this case the uh, current is limited to less than 2 milliamps DC, Nevertheless, uh, definitely not something uh, to be recommended. Now the other test on the top here is the uh, resistance, or basically uh, continuity. And as with the uh, installation resistance, there's no other settings here, so it's just a question of selecting it over here, doesn't matter what's going on over there. Now uh, this uh, is basically an automatic test, so essentially as soon as the two things are put together, then it will actually do the measurement straight away. So there we have it. 200 milliamps there was the test current, and uh, that's pretty much the standard deal to use for installation. So that's actually stated in BS7671. And you notice that once we've undone those, it goes back to showing as open or greater than 99.9 k ohms. And it does put the previous reading up here, so obviously it's still there. You haven't actually lost it if you weren't paying attention. Now this does have a zero function because of course depending on what leads you're using these leads do have a certain resistance and although it's not going to be very large if you're measuring small resistances of course that can be significant. So to uh, set the zero and it will actually show up here when the zero is selected it's a question of pressing the test button so if you press it with the leads open that will clear that and if you wanted to use these two leads for example place those together and that then measures the resistance, but then if you press the test button that then stores that particular value as the resistance of these leads. And as I've done in previous videos, when you connect two clips together, it is important that you're connecting them right in the correct way. Basically you want the fixed jaws to be together like that, and that's zero. What you don't want is to put the adjustable jaws together like that, because if you do then it's not the same reading. That comes out there as 0.02 or so. Then again, if you put it back to the others, it comes out as zero. So although it's a small difference, you're basically measuring the resistance of the hinge on the two, which of course you don't really want. So something to be uh, aware of there. And then so it's gone back to open. So this is an automatic test. You don't need to press the test button for it, which is a bit confusing, but it does have the zero symbol on there just to remind you of that. Now we'll turn to an actual test because uh, I'm trying to measure something of uh, some sort of value. I've got some of this uh, triple and earth cable here, and we're just going to measure the uh, CPC there, or the copper bare one in the centre. So we'll connect up one end here. This is not a full roll, but uh, a spare we have uh, just laying around. So all we basically do is connect up to that. And then we have it 0.09 ohms. This is a very short piece, so no real surprises there. See how consistent that is. That again, we'll just go to fully open. And if we clamp back on, yep, 0.09 ohms as we had before. So that's uh, pretty much how that works. Now it does store that zero value, so you only do it once per set of leads. But if we were to change the test lead, say, to uh, this elegant device here, this did not come with the. Uh, particular piece of items equipment here, this is just an unrelated piece. This is basically a 50 meter long test lead, ideal for testing 
main bonding and such like things. And uh, if we actually use this, I'll just disconnect the green one and uh, connect this one inside in there instead. Then what we've now got is basically a 50 metre roll of wire here. And roll a bit. Which of course should have a fairly significant resistance. So just between the two here, and again we'll do between the two uh, fixed jaws. As we see there, it's 1.02 ohms, as this is basically around a 1 ohm total resistance over its 15 metre length. So just shows there the uh, different choices we can get. And if we're actually going to use this thing in uh, a real test, then of course what we could do is to press the button there and zero that out. That has basically reset that to zero there. And then if we uh, clamp onto that, that gives us the value of 1.1. Now that's zeroed out, so now we can then measure things with these, and that should give us the same kind of values we had before. So if we go back to our uh, bit of old cable here, we can just clamp on at the end here. This clip is not quite as good as the uh, actual mega ones, but never mind, that's what it came with. And uh, Let's find the other end of that. So they we're getting 0.1 ohms. It was actually 0.09 before, but uh, that's certainly within the uh, realms of any kind of error of the measurement. So uh, that's basically how those work. This clip isn't uh, saying particularly wonderful there. It's got rather strange curved jaws. So. Not really the best for uh, gripping onto individual conductors, but that's basically how the zero function works. And again, if we press that, that will then uh, erase that value from there. And then we could go back to our more conventional test leads and uh, measure those instead. Now, the other main settings or measurement on this are the earth resistance measurement. So that would be the brown choice over here. And as with the others, the brown here needs to be selected to one of the brown bits over there. Otherwise, obviously, just plays the error there. Now, what this is for is to measure in the uh, resistance of earth electrodes or earth rods or anything else in the ground, earth tape or grids or whatever else. And there's uh, quite a few different modes we can use here. That's just the uh, standard thing there. But we've got two here and a couple of other options there. Uh, it's just a question of uh, picking the appropriate one. In terms of doing the test, it will just show you the uh, resistance on the screen in the usual way. Now, the three choices we've got, I don't actually have an earth electrode here to test, although I do have a set of leads which uh, will work with this thing. Test leads for this do not come with this. They are purchased as a separate accessory, mainly because testing earth electrodes is not something which everybody's necessarily going to do. It's certainly going to work in a uh, town or somewhere like that. It's not something going to come across that often. And even in rural areas now, there's a lot of... Uh, TNCS stuff going in, so even though it's not necessarily useful, but of course we have into things like electric vehicle charging, something which may become more needed in the future. So uh, essentially the option we've got here is a two or a three pole measurement, and you can use the uh, actual testing leads, which we'll look at in a moment, either with two of them or with three of them, and they connect into the same uh, connectors on the back here. The only difference is rather than the uh, L1, 2 and 3 colours there, we're actually using the other markings underneath, so the red, green and the yellow, which uh, so corresponds to the colours on the test leads. The black plus and minus there, or the red plus and the black minus, for the uh, continuity and the insulation resistance we've already looked at. So they would connect there. Two or three pole is pretty much the same deal. The only difference is that on the uh, two pole you're actually connecting both the red and yellow leads to the same a potential electrode. The green one goes to the actual electrode under test. And then for the three-pole one, again, the green one goes to the electrode under test. And then you have two separate stakes or prods there. One for current, which is the red one, and one for potential, which is the yellow one. And it will automatically detect whether you've got uh, also whichever one you've picked there. As they are all going to be wired up together, if it determines two are connected together, it will do the two-pole test. And if they're all separate, then obviously the three-pole and in terms of testing, it's just a question of pressing the test button. It will then do the business, and uh, obviously in this case it's an error because there's nothing connected. Of course, in reality, it would show the uh, resistance there. Now, the other choices here, these are used, again, with another optional accessory, which is a clamp, or in the case of this one, two clamps. So it's either a current clamp 
and the potential stake or current clamp and a potential clamp. This one particularly is useful because you don't have to actually disconnect the electrode to do the test. So you can just put the two clamps around and it will do the test without making any physical connection to that. But for this one it's very similar to we had on those there. The three uh, connections, one goes to the electrode under test, and then you have your potential and the current stake, and then the current clamp goes around the electrode itself that you're testing, and then that gives you the results. And for the uh, twin clamp option here, basically you don't have to make any electrical connection to the electrode whatsoever. You're just basically putting the current clamp around the, say, existing earth wire that goes to the electrode, and the uh, voltage clamp around the same wire. What it essentially does then is inject a current via the voltage clamp into the wire and then the other clamp measures the current and then it can determine the resistance from that. In terms of what those actually look like uh, this is not a uh, mega one here these are actually a uh, fluke set but the principle is exactly the same. These are a bit grubby because they obviously don't get used outside when they are used. Now what we've got in this set, and in fact most other sets, are all pretty much the uh, same kind of thing. You get two of these metal spikes here, which you ram into the ground. And then the end here is what uh, this uh, connection thing goes on to. So I'll just clip onto the end there, or not likely in the middle there like that. So two of those. And then the third one connects to the electrode that's installed in the ground. So this is what would go to your electrode in the ground. This is the sort of green one there, and it's got that for the clips onto the electrode. That goes into the test instrument there. And then we have the two others, which is the yellow one here, same kind of deal. Just got the uh, plug there goes into the test device, and the big clip there, which is covered in grotty bits of dirt, which goes onto one of these. The yellow one is for the potential stake, and then the red one is the current stake. That's extremely long because that's one you put furthest away from the actual electrode. So it's basically that for the electrode. This is a certain distance away, and then this is far away in the meter of many, many meters. And uh, it's quite a faff to do the test there. I haven't done a video on that, so we might do in the future if people are particularly interested in it. But uh, essentially you connect up these three, and then uh, you're supposed to do multiple tests and move the yellow one various positions between the other two, and then make up some kind of average reading between those, so uh, a fairly tiresome process, and of course we have these massive long wires coming out and uh, hopefully not getting them tangled and whatever else, but uh, that's how it basically works. You're basically standing in someone's disgusting soggy wet garden, probably in the rain, stabbing these into the lawn and uh, trying to get uh, some kind of consistent reading. Now having said those are fluke ones, I'm not entirely sure that they are because there's no uh, manufacturer's name on them anywhere, but uh, nevertheless I thought they were fluke ones, but in any case, they're like 15 plus years old, so uh, we'll uh, continue to use them as and when needed. Now the only thing we'll just have a quick look at is this thing here, which is this touch voltage sensor. And this doesn't appear to be documented in the manual, which is a bit uh, rubbish, but the idea is that if you have a single wire connected, or in fact uh, multiple ones, connected to the uh, middle one here, the L2, now we're going to connect the red one in here just for this demonstration. So we know it will reliably operate. What it's basically doing is checking the voltage between that and your finger that's placed here. Now, as you can see there, get the warning because the voltage there is off the uh, around 230. So it's basically a capacitive effect. You're not actually directly connecting on it because it's plastic, but uh, it works in most of the modes. So that if you put your finger here and you get the warning. So a little indication there and the uh, warning triangle. It basically means that the voltage between you, which should be standing on the ground, and whatever you've plugged into the what should be the earth connection is rather excessive. It doesn't say that volt, but the uh, the fluke one I've got has a similar function that works at anything over 100 volts. So it's just a sort of supplementary warning. Could let you say there's a problem with the installation or say the earth has got some dangerous voltage on it. Much better to check using that rather than putting your fingers on something and uh, potentially getting a shock from it. So uh, that's what that's for, that's just in the uh, voltage mode there. I believe it does also work in the uh, other modes as well. 
Yep, so there it is again. So although it's not showing any voltage here because we're only connected up with a single one, it does still check between this and that to give that additional warning function. So look there, the Mega MFT1741. And the uh, so only test we didn't do there really was the uh, Earth electrode test, mainly because we haven't got one of those around here and therefore can't actually test it. Now, I haven't actually done a video on testing those, so if people do want to see that, then leave a message in the comments or something and see if we can get that arranged. But it will obviously involve getting somewhere that's either got an electrode or where we can shove one in and then demonstrate uh, how it would be tested using the three wires we saw there. So that's certainly a possibility. The uh, other method there of using the uh, current and voltage clamp uh, can also be done. Those clamps are an optional accessory. They also cost around £300 each, so uh, not something I'm looking to get because they're very limited use. They're basically only for that uh, specific mode of testing the earth electrode. And the current one can also be used to measure current directly on the uh, current setting on the front should you want to do that. But at £300 that's a lot of money. It doesn't do anything that a standard handheld clamp meter wouldn't do anyway. So uh, there we go, a fairly uh, reasonable overview of that, and it seems to do all the business and everything else. My only complaint with that is the instructions that's come on that CD. That CD is horribly out of date, doesn't even cover this model, and it also seems to have certain bits of it missing, and it also covers certain other models which they either don't sell in this country or don't even sell anymore at all. So a bit of an update required there, but uh, this is the perils of uh, instructions, and they uh, say it seems to come on these discs these days rather than having a nice printed manual. But in any case, that's uh, all for this time. So until next time, thanks for watching.